Hi everyone, this session is about Pega Alerts. We will try to understand what is Pega Alert and why Pega generates a Pega Alert and how that is going to be useful for the viewers of the Pega Alert log file. Okay, so first of all, all these Pega Alerts will be generated in a log file like most of us know. If you're new to this, there is nothing uh, too deep in this so pega as a system it generates uh, pega alerts into a log file called pega alerts log file if you log into dev studio there is a place once we open that we can get to see this pega alerts log file as well okay so these are the pega alerts like you will see the entries based on the timestamp you will see so and so is the alert but this session is mostly focusing on the concept on when a pega alert gets generated and how you can get acquainted with some of the alerts i'll take a use case where i'll start explaining by taking a user who is trying to access a particular pega application on a web browser so on a web browser the http url of a pega application is accessed Right. So that means probably user might be doing something where he or she has entered some ID based on which some data has to be retrieved from so and so. Uh, so now the request goes on in the form of HTTP request to the application server. So this is our application server. And what application server will do? It receives a request. It has to service this response and it has to return the response back. And once the response is formulated, it is returned, then it has to be rendered on the UI. That is an example. Perfect. So we have a request and response. Ideally, as a user, whoever has made access to this particular request will expect the response in a fraction of seconds. What if this request, yeah, uh, to receive its response, it has taken more than the intended time? Ideally, it should have taken, let's say, 0.01 seconds, but it has taken some 3-4 seconds due to some issues. So that is an alert. Someone has to look at it at a later point in time. So that is the beauty where Pega, what it will do is on the tab server for that node, it will have a respective Pega alert log file. It will dump that alert, which is one in this case, which is Pega 0001. So this is an alert which comes when a browser interaction has taken more than the intended time. So there will be a threshold which will be set. If it has crossed the threshold of, let's say, a few fraction of seconds, then so-and-so alert is dumped into this Pega alert log file. Assume that this has happened in production and the user reported you some production issue saying something has taken more than five seconds on the UI. <coughs> Isn't that something where you have to go and check why it has happened? For that reason, Pega is leaving a trace for you where you as a developer or someone from your maintenance teams can go and check the log file and can get some more detail based on the timestamp and the information that is said in the alert log file or by taking some pattern and understanding what has happened by debugging the respective log files in production. At least it left out a trace for us that something went wrong, something has crossed the threshold and there is something we need to look at it very good. This is a very basic example of Pega Alert. Now, let us also try to understand few more alerts which can happen so that you'll be acquainted to some of the alerts. And after this session, you can also take a look at some more and start getting more used to them. So App Server uh, ultimately interacts with the database to get the results, right? So let's draw that picture also. So App Server, whenever the request comes prior to this, anyways, App Server should be able to acquire the connection to the database, agree? So any transaction you make, example, if the DB operation you're making to fetch the list of some records from the database, right? Here, in this use case, customer has entered some ID, for that ID, we try to fetch some response, which is the number of some results. It could be anything. Now, those number of results, the result set has actually come from where? Even though I'm depicting that from App Server here, that has come from the database. That means the, whatever the DB transaction that has happened from the server, so the query is formed, the SQL query, and it is executed, and the execution has given the result set, right? 
and that query execution what if that takes more time than intended right the so the first one is about browser interaction second one is about acquiring the db connection and third one is about in this example the query execution time okay so the second one is the db acquired time is more than expected more than intended one like more than the threshold it should be again fraction of seconds but it takes let's say three four seconds or five seconds or, or more than that then what we do is then also pega dumps it as an alert which is pega 0026 as an alert into the pega alert log file how do we know this like do we really need to <coughs> remember this you don't have to just from my experience whatever i remember i am trying to just recollect and try to put it in this session but likewise when you are working from your experience you will be able to remember some pega alerts based on the use cases that you have mostly worked on which is fine now what is point three this is where the query execution time has taken some let's say four or five seconds instead of fraction of seconds that time pega generates pega 005 alert 0005 alert so that means how this is helping us so at least it will say so and so query at so and so point in time on this node has so and so has taken so and so time that means because of that user would have experienced some issue at, sometimes you might see that okay if the threshold is like 500 milliseconds that is like 0.5 seconds it would have taken some 0.6 seconds you might ignore that sometimes which is okay but most of the times when you are really debugging the issues it might happen it should have taken only a fraction of a second but it in reality it has taken some seven seconds why it has taken seven seconds that's when we start to do our analysis and these alerts will really help in that point in time now and the last one is once the query and the result time a query is executed and the result set is returned back in the response okay it takes some time to render on the ui sometimes what happens is the result sets will be so huge that the client side loading or rendering will be uh, taking a lot of time that client side loading if it is really taking a lot of time then pega throws pega 0069 from my experience i have seen uh, i i can't even forget this pega alert because most of the times customers would expect us to show a lot of information on the ui some of the users might not like the ideas of paginations or you know lazy loads so whenever such kind of exceptional scenarios happen we have to deal with so many other aspects or approaches right so while we try to implement most of the best approaches whatever possible i have seen in my experience this client side load of the huge result set takes a lot of time of course there are ways to handle it but at least if there is a problem in the application imagine you have not built the application someone else have built this and you just came and you, you are debugging this issue then if something is really not working and users are complaining when something is really so slow on the system and they hit they hit one button and then system takes a lot of time to respond back or present with the result set then imagine you went to this pega alert log file and it showed to pega 0016 at the same date time then you can do a root cause analysis to understand what is that result set what is that alert and what are the alerts prior to that which has happened most of the times one alert will not give you the clue all the alerts together will give you a story that is the main message i want to give in this session so don't look at the alerts one by one like i said there is a story here where user came in and they started clicking on a button by entering some id and then the request went to app server right and overall then a db connection and then the query and the result set and rendering on the client so this is a use case likewise take it take the alerts try to see the alerts from the use case point of view then your debugging becomes easy okay now you understood what is a pega alert any alarming situation which needs to be alerted so pega is leaving a trace of that in pega alerts log file and why is pega alert generated obviously someone has to look look at that so that it won't repeat in future why they are frequently exceeding the thresholds do we really need to take a look at each and every alert if you are taking a look at the alert we are reviewing it if it is fine that's fine but if the threshold is crossed by a large margin or by a wider margin 
then we need to definitely address them. Now, how this is going to help us? There are two ways of looking at this. Now, if you are a developer, so imagine uh, if you're doing a development for any user story, if you're tackling or if you're reviewing the alerts during the development lifecycle itself, you can definitely be able to mostly like 50 to 60% of the issues. I'm just taking, giving some percentage from my experience. You can avoid those to arise in the production environment or in the higher environments. If there is any issue really happening in production, when we have the trace of those in Pega alerts log file, most of the times, I will say 50% of the times, from my experience again, but you can comment from your experience, that's okay. At least from my experience, most of the times, these Pega alerts log file, they will really talk about the story or the use case that particular user have done uh, for which so-and-so behavior has happened. At least you will be able to give a cover story for what has happened as part of the root cause analysis in your debugging. Okay, hope this helped you to understand the basic of Pega Alert and the concept of why, what is a Pega Alert and why is this generated and how it can help you in your applications. Okay, thank you.